some version of this I would advise considering for everybody's like core principles is like meet the needs of the moment. In this moment, if you're, if you're in the process of letting this person go, then not letting her go for a theoretical future that may or may not happen is kind of trying to like anticipate the needs of a future hypothetical moment, you know? Just all we can do is meet the needs of the moment. It's that quote in Adam Folker's bathroom is framed. It's like live the present moment completely and the future will take care of itself. So I will say part of letting a relationship go is letting the story of the relationship go, which is sad because the story is what both of you have built up and created in your mind. You have all these inside jokes and these moments that you shared and these like even names that you call each other and you have songs you listen to and places you like to go and you know, I don't want to make Jackson cry. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the story of the relationship and the history and it's every relationship kind of has those. And that's what makes them so beautiful and letting them go means also letting all of those stories go. But those stories aren't real in the moment. They're just ideas in the mind, they're memories. And they can often act like glue that like keeps relationships together past their expiration date because of this sort of idea that's been built up in the mind. Um, so I'll put it this way. Every genuine relationship is an act of surrender. Whether you go out to the bar and meet her or you know, she asks you to the dance and you go for a handshake, like you said, and, and then you guys just magically have this connection or, um, man, I mean, I, I once, I was on a retreat and my flight, my flight got shifted three days. So the dates that I landed at the retreat center came three days later and I'd been waiting ages to go to this retreat. So I land, I get to the jungle and within an hour of me showing up, this girl lands at the jungle and I see her and I'm like, oh, like, that's interesting. And it turns out that her plans had been shifted to that exact same day and we arrived at the exact same time. And then it just worked out that we were like in that place at that specific time. And she had even seen like a close friend of mine uh, several months ago or several months before, and he had told her about the retreat and convinced her to go. There, there was this like, what Merrick would call synchronicity, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was all magical and whatever. And part of letting that relationship go is letting go of the idea that, oh, the universe created this. The universe creates everything. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you meet her. She came into your life, like that's magic. And so the next time around, I promise you, you're going to be saying the same thing. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh my God, this is so much, this is incredible. And it's probably going to be even better, you know? And the one after that, you're going to be even more experienced, more refined, less reactive, more clear on your standards and what you want and like, and it's going to get better and better and better. Um, and so my advice really, and I guess this goes, I know there's some people transitioning in relationships in various ways um, now or, or soon or in the future. And my advice is like, don't rush the process of letting it go because it's uncomfortable. You know? Let go of the idea of letting it go and just let it be. <laughs> Right, Simon? Right. Experience is Just gotta let it be. Imagine all the people. <laughs> do you think at that point when you're like, you get over the story and like you feel 
like you're starting to let it go, is it just best to just cut off like all communication? My philosophy on that is communicate as much as is needed for both people to get a realistic amount of closure and no more. So make it clean. Um, that could mean different things in different circumstances and you'll know by feel. And also it's, a, you're gonna see it on two levels of your emotional system. It's gonna be like level one, the impulse level of, oh, but I, I really wanna talk to her. <laughs> you know, Maybe I don't have closure. And then a deeper level that I feel or I don't feel complete with our communication. There isn't much more we could say to each other at this point to like complete this phase, right? And so maybe that's like you have a breakup talk. Typically that involves at least one more talk, um, maybe one more, and that's kind of it. And the clean cuts are the ones that I've succeeded with in the past personally. I was really proud of myself the, this last time around. I felt like a kind of veteran <laughs> at that point because when I was younger, it was like, I'll stay in it till the house burns down. You know, <laughs> you'll have to like pry me out of there. I'll just keep trying to make it work. And because it's uncomfortable. And then this last time, it was just a really clean conversation. Like, this is exactly how I feel. I don't see us being life partners. And that's what I'm looking for. So I can't be in this anymore. It's just very clean and direct. You know, she cried, I cried, she left. We didn't really talk. A week later, we had a phone call. That was it, you know? And so that's kind of, in my mind, best case scenario. If it's a longer relationship, it might take more time. If you're like more entwined in each other's lives, it might make, take more time. You might run into each other, but I would just go to the point where you feel complete and then override that impulse. <laughs> That's going to be the trick. Like relationship survival 101 is override the impulse to keep on reaching out and keep on opening the wound. Yeah, I feel like I've been doing that like so far here because it'd be easy to just like during break like go like send a text or something like that yeah but she's like so like set on like you know staying in touch and like oh see each other breaks and stuff so like although i feel like um like cutting it off like that is like the best idea like i also don't like you know i don't want her to like her feelings to like be hurt yeah i mean managing other people's feelings is a fool's game it's not your responsibility. And who's to say that her being hurt isn't the right thing for her? Yeah. Pain is not a bad thing. And pain is guaranteed in relationships. So often what I've found is when I'm trying not to hurt the other person, I act in a way that ends up hurting them worse than if I had just been honest. Like with that girl who said, I love you. And I was like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> you know, like, let's just like entertain this reality for now. In the end, she got hurt worse. Um, yeah. So when I said cut off communication after, it's, after there's closure, I'm not saying forever. It doesn't, it could be forever, you know? And at a certain point, you're not gonna care. Like they're, I'm trying to think if this is true. All of the relationships I've had except for I'm not in touch with anymore and I have no idea what's going on in their lives and I could not care less. Doesn't mean I don't care for them. Like, hope you have a nice life, like great. No ill will, warm feeling, appreciate them. They don't cross my mind. Um, but maybe you do see each other on break, you know? But when, it's, when the wound is fresh, you've gotta seal it, like stitch the wound up and let it heal. <laughs> And then once it heals over, you'll be much more capable of communicating in like an unclouded way. But when there's a cut, like a cut in the relationship, you cut each other, you, you separate, yeah? Stitch it up, let it heal cleanly. Stop opening the wound by listening to Marvin's room and Drake and like, <laughs> let it heal. 
and then maybe open up communication again.